Hi guys, it's Dan. Welcome to my short travel video. We're going to Singapore, Kuala Lumpur and Hanoi. Hope you enjoy the video and hope it inspires you to pack a bag, get to the airport and go and see the world. As I look around my studio, I'm reminded of my travels. Those few weeks spent away from home each year form memories that last a lifetime. Travel can be whatever you want it to be. You can live at whatever you've seen on the screen or imagine doing. Travel can be intimidating. New people, new foods, new culture, new ways of doing things. But once you get past those barriers and realise how similar we all really are, it brings a wonderful sense of freedom and adventure. Travel genuinely does open your eyes and broadens your mind. Everyone should do it. For me, travel isn't about as much as you can do. It's about doing what you want to do. No matter how obscure, nothing is off limits. You can truly be yourself. It's a chance to get out there into the world. I'm a father now to two wonderful children and I can't wait to take them traveling when they're older. For now though, one last adventure is in order. This trip had been nearly two years in the making. Covid delayed everything and I hadn't flown for four years. I forgot just how much fun driving to the airport at 2am could be. The journey time would be 25 hours, taking into account the time zone changes and a transfer in Doha. I've never been able to sleep mid-flight and that's something that apparently hasn't changed. I'd been to Singapore once before, in 2015. I've been looking forward to returning again. One of the themes that I'll talk about is the architecture there, it's great. Here is the world's largest indoors waterfall casually inside of the airport. The Marina Bay is a world leading architectural huddle and I plan to be there each morning to photograph it. This city state has a fascinating existence and I could easily move there to live. So, there I am in the hotel lobby, absolutely shattered and excited. I'd had about three hours sleep getting there. I was waiting for a friend, so to introduce him, we actually need to go back to 2016, Japan. <laughs> this is Ben from Australia. We met by chance in Osaka. We exchanged pleasantries, he asked me where I was from, I told him. He expressed his condolences, I was offended. So we had a drink, and another, and another. He'd been to Wales to visit me since, but now it was time to reunite. The plan was to meet his old uni friend Lance, a Singaporean. Lance would then drive us into Malaysia, where we would meet another old uni friend, Adele, in Kuala Lumpur. We'd then fly on to Hanoi. It was great to see Ben again. I brought some whiskey from home. So a few glasses of that later, some coffee, and time just hit the ground running. I'm 
Okay, so the end of the first day, it's just been a completely epic day. I've really enjoyed that. For a day that hasn't really had a working plan, it's turned out really well. Um, lovely to arrive back in Singapore. Uh, it's the architecture here, it's the way it looks. It feels like the busiest place on earth. Lance has then changed his plans, taking us some really interesting spots and places to eat that we wouldn't know about. He's just been an absolute gift to us and I, I'll be forever grateful for, for his efforts today and I'm sure over the next two days as well. Time now is quarter past midnight. Sunrise tomorrow is going to be about half past six. I've got three days to, to nail the pictures so. Let's just hope this works. Well, I reckon I've done that in about seven minutes. Uh, so far, so good. There's no rain. The water looks still. The lights are still on in the buildings. Let me show you. Each morning, I'd be up early and down the marina for sunrise. This was photography bucket list stuff for me, and I've been excited about this for years. This would be a good test of my skills. We don't really have things like this in Wales. I must have taken at least 200 photos. The sessions would start technically in the night time, but soon the twilight would arrive with its blue and purple tones. This is my favorite time for photography. This photo to me is my best. I'm proud of this. It's six photos blended into a high dynamic range image. And as you're seeing, photos in real life aren't always the same. Photography is subjective, I suppose to me it's creating an ideal vision. It's very quiet in the area and with my music on I was in my absolute element. I was able to get the drone up and begin to await the sunrise. The buildings to the left, Marina Bay Sands, are not very old. The land that they're on isn't much older either. When you compare these drone views against archive pictures, you see how much has been built here. The grey building next to the white bridge used to be the waterfront here. I'd spoken with a local photographer online and on the second morning I found myself laid down on the staff entrance to the science museum. I know to some this is not the way to start the day, but to me this is what it's all about, watching the sunrise from the other side of the world. The sunrise brings a change of character with it, reflecting off of the glass fronted buildings. Across the bay, people are beginning their day. The Malayan is the mascot of Singapore, a symbolic figure. The fish body represents Singapore's origin as a fishing village and the lion head is a play on the country's original name, Singapura, Lion City. I'm a big fan of Singapore, I look forward to bringing the kids here. It's impossible to tell you the history of Singapore in two minutes, so I'll give an overview. This man, Stanford Raffles, played an important role in creating modern Singapore, starting in the 19th century. Starting here in the Boat Quay is probably a good start. Before the land reclamation and skyscrapers, these buildings were the waterfront docks of which Singapore traded with the world. The juxtaposition against the skyscrapers is perfect. The powerhouse trading done here nowadays is up there. 
The colonial architecture is tastefully combined with the newer buildings in a visual act of the nation's evolution. There are certain angles and views that remind me of home, but I only have to look upwards to realise that I'm somewhere quite different. There's plenty of colonial pomp on show, which has been very well preserved and of course replaced. Some traditions are kept though. The weather has just as much character, here being on the equator. Society is made up of the majority Chinese, Malay and Indian communities. Each are of course proud, seeped in history and these heritages are visibly distinct from one another as you move around. All are accessible to visitors. You can't eat a boring meal here. Beyond this, there are now people from all over the globe here. This is a truly global place. In some aspects it feels like home from home. Little things like wall plugs, fluent English, conversations with Lance where you realise the UK's impact here is still in effect. But in others it feels almost utopian, on the cutting edge. For our last evening, Lance took us to a Thai restaurant. Lots of beer and meat and I was in my element. Here we are then, signing off in Singapore. Um, I've had a great time here, I'm really gonna miss miss being here. I, I think this is the perfect city. I'm looking over at the Ferris wheel there, the Singapore flyer, and for me that's probably poetic because it was there that I first formed the impression I wanted to come back and take a better picture. And what I mean by that is that back in 2015 I was still using a smartphone with a camera and this is when smartphone cameras weren't particularly good. So I knew that I got a really good image but obviously the resolution wasn't there, the quality wasn't there. And soon after that I got into photography, I went to Japan for the second time, I had my first DSLR camera. And I think in the back of my mind there's always been an element of come back and do it again. What photography is about, it's about doing it for yourself. It's about seeing something you aspire to replicate or something that you're inspired by and want to add to. And about doing it, so here I am from North Wales, a good 25 hours on the plane later. We're off to Kuala Lumpur today. Um, that's going to bring new challenges with it. Obviously the Petronas Towers are target number one. But I'm hoping that an element of not having been there before and not really knowing what to take photos of works in my favour. See you in Kuala Lumpur. So after a final morning in the marina, Lance picked us up and showed us his new apartment that was being completed. He and his friend Sean then drove us across the border to Johabaru, that's Malaysia's second city. There was a Japanese restaurant that they knew of and they wanted us to try. Lance, being the absolute legend that he is, orders what felt like half the menu. This food was amazing and I'm pleased that we left the ordering to him and Sean. Feeling absolutely stuffed, we drove to the hot and cold spas and saunas to relax. And after that, it was time to eat again, dim sum. Some intense man hugs later and it was off to the airport for the short flight to KL. I was too tired to have any first real impressions of Malaysia, but it clearly felt like a different country. Busier, more hectic, not quite as familiar as Singapore. It was an hour's drive from the airport to the hotel and I was desperate to sleep. But this view made staying awake worth it. For once, a room with a view. A hell of a view. After making sure that the towers were still there and I hadn't been hallucinating, focus turned to food. So we ordered a cab and made our way to a popular hawker centre. For breakfast we had one ton mee noodles with jiazu and dumplings, ice coffee to drink and more jiazu in steam buns made to order. These places are a foodie's paradise and I could certainly spend a day in one. Our next port of call was the Batu Caves. This almost felt like a side trip into India. Again, I find this coexistence of cultures to be mesmerising. It literally stands in stark contrast to what we'd seen so far. This cave and temple complex is an important place of worship and celebration for the Hindu community. 
It's just over 100 years old, but it hosts an annual Taipusam festival that draws people from all over the world. It's not just a tourist attraction. The rain was welcome, taking the edge off the heat and I came face to face with many monkeys on the way down. They saw that I had food on me, that I bought at the bottom, so I had to chuck it to them or face attack, they genuinely began closing me down. They clearly run the show here, fearing only the storekeepers and their brooms, they're ruthless. At the bottom it was time for a drink and wait for the rain to ease off. Dosses around the outside of the caves are these platforms and stages containing various Hindu deities and icons. I can't tell you anything meaningful about them, you'll have to excuse my ignorance. People spend a lifetime learning about this. But I absolutely appreciate the work that has got into making these and this artistic style is instantly recognisable. It's just an absolute array of colour and decoration. I can tell you that this is Hanuman, one of the 33 Hindu gods. Fun fact, Rama and Sita, other gods, sit inside his heart. We headed back into the city centre to meet Adele, a friend of Ben and Lance. Adele was great, and like Singapore there's no language barrier. She chose us satay, wings, nazi bajari, azam laksa, and then she took us to a nearby bar and out drank the pair of us. We really enjoyed that evening, good laugh. Okay, so KL day two, um, last day here off to Hanoi tomorrow. Um, it's been a very brief visit here. We got here a little bit later than expected. Um, yesterday was a great day. We went to the Batu Caves, we went to see Adele, and that really was our plan here. I think you could easily spend uh, a lot of time in Malaysia, obviously, with just in Kuala Lumpur for the, uh, for the days. But yeah, it's, it's been interesting. I'm really glad we stopped here between Singapore and Vietnam because this was a third way of, of doing things, I guess. So, um, that's it. Uh, I hope the picture of the towers came up. This is the picture that I wanted, um, a bit like in Singapore. It was it was that particular set of pictures. It's, it's this set of pictures here. Um, what can I say? Uh, I'll see you soon. As I've said, I quite like architecture. I can't tell you anything about building, but I can sometimes tell you a little bit about a building. The Petronas Towers need no introduction. They're surely amongst the most recognisable structures on Earth. They were the world's tallest buildings from 1998 to 2004. They were then surpassed by Taipei 101 in Taiwan, an equally distinct skyscraper, and one I'll hopefully see some other day. The towers were amongst the first of a wave of super tall architecture that spread across Asia. The Malaysian government and Petronas simply wanted to announce KL on the world stage by going tallest. The towers are concrete with stainless steel cladding. They are absurdly heavy and required the world's deepest foundations. The architect, the famous Caesar Pelli, wanted to incorporate traditional Malaysian Islamic patterning into the building's design. When viewed from above, the tower's shape reveals all. They consist of six stepped levels with helipads and room for over 5,000 cars underneath. They remain by far the world's tallest twin design and of course have the sky bridge. As I speak, they're about to complete the world's second tallest skyscraper here. Malaysia has many faces to show the world and cutting edge is one of them. We had downtime that evening, so I was back out in the rain and that brought a whole new character to the views. I haven't added the red colouring that you'll see in the sky, that is what I saw. The clouds was moving quickly and sometimes covering the towers. I had to be patient and wait for the tower tops to appear again. I enjoy working in these conditions. This isn't the weather that you'd ordinarily be outside for, but you know this may be the only attempt you get at it. 
I'm pleased with what I was able to get, the weather added more character to the photos. Mission complete and it was time for bed. I was excited to get up and get going. I was having the time of my life. Vietnam was always going to be the most foreign destination on this trip, the one that would be the proper adventure. It would be a three hour flight and a chance to reflect on things so far. I'll try my best to get back to Malaysia one day and travel other parts of the country. Somewhere over the South China Sea, my stomach turned. So when we landed, I was confined to our brilliant Airbnb. The aircon was bliss and the sleep did me good. I dozed off to the sound of a thousand horns heard outside. Anyway, Hanoi. Whilst we tour the serene setting of Nyop Temple on Huang Kim Lake, let me tell you this, Hanoi is the most frantic, chaotic, loud, pure pandemonium of a place I think I've ever been to. But it's great! Stay in the old quarter like we did, enjoy the broad absence of recognisable shops and advertising, have an exotic fruit juice for pennies and just absorb it all. There's plenty of new foods to try and conversations to have with people here. You won't eat a boring meal, Vietnamese history and culture is massive. In more recent history, Hanoi, being northern, was a key city for the Viet Cong. There are some other visual clues here. The French left their mark with bread, still made here, but buildings like St. Joseph's Cathedral. So what's next? How about a train coming down the street?
Okay then, so that's the train done. Uh, that was a big one for me. I'll probably, I'm not sure where else you'd see this in the world. I'm sure there are probably a few places in the world that this does happen, but uh, I think it's the only one I'll be going to. Yeah, I didn't realise that they weren't as frequent as I expected. I thought they'd be once every half an hour, every hour. Uh, they're about four times a day, starting from the morning to the late evening. So it's taken me about 90 minutes in waiting for it to go past. But um, yeah, I'm in a bit of a daze now. I found a lovely cafe, uh, food, drink, had a nice time. We had an overnight excursion booked, a cruise around Heilong Bay. You can't visit Hanoi and not visit this spectacular piece of coastline. We met some excellent travel companions on the way and that set the tone for this fantastic outing. It was a brief insight into more ordinary Vietnam and I get the sense that this country will massively advance sooner rather than later. The people our age and younger seem keen to try their English with us and I hope that I can come back here one day and it hasn't lost too much of its character. Despite drinking into the early hours and clearly still being drunk, I was still up to see the sunrise. We'd made fast friends with those sat around our dinner table. We had us, two Indians, an Indonesian and a Canadian. These conversations were top notch and socialising like that whilst on holiday is a genuine once in a lifetime thing. A privilege that just makes you want to travel even more. Put your shyness to one side and just get talking. We'd have happily stayed aboard for another night. The boat and the scenery far surpass our expectations. As we headed back to shore, I wondered about the people that live out here. What were their stories and what was life like for them? Our trip was approaching its end. We had one big night ahead of us. Time had just flown by.
We met a lad from London that night. It was his first time in Asia. His excitement was incredible. It reminded me of how I felt my first time. And it brought things full circle in a way. It was my time to return home, mission completed. Vietnam gets two thumbs up from me. And where we ended this trip compared to where we started couldn't be more different. I really do recommend Asia to anyone. It is a place of many, many cultures and personalities. I was looking forward to getting home. I have my two little mates waiting for me.